Welcome to Discover La Jolla, where we showcase this coastal community boasting boutique businesses and vibrant upscale neighborhoods. I'm your host, Valley, and I'm here with my co-host, Jim McInerney. Hey, Valley. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you. It's good to see you. We are finally getting some sunshine in San Diego. It's the transformation time. Yeah, it's starting to feel like summer, which yep. I think we call it like buying season, moving season in San Diego. Yeah. So what are some trends you're seeing of people you know, coming or leaving San Diego in your community? Um, we're definitely seeing a migration from Northern California to San Diego, certainly in the biotech um, field, mm -hmm. uh, the science field. Mm -hmm. uh, the development out there off Torrey Pines is just booming. Mm -hmm. New offices are going up, employees are moving down. I think uh, people have realized that they can uh, enjoy San Diego and still do their job. Yeah. So it's really wonderful to have the experience of working with new clients that are coming to San Diego for the first time. And that means, I would assume, that prices are going to go up a little bit for those sellers who are maybe looking to downsize or move out or move more inland. They could get a lot more for their home with people moving into the neighborhood. Absolutely. The demand is still very high. The inventory is still very low. Nothing has changed there. The rates have gone up, but in these coastal communities, um, we're not as affected by rate increases. Um, most of the transactions we're seeing are either all cash or you know 30 or 50 percent cash. Yeah. Um, so I can, I think that trend is going to continue because I don't know what would increase inventory. Mm -hmm. I really think we're going to be in this sort of pattern yeah. with prices slowly drifting up right. and the demand still there. Well, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with that too. Yeah. So Jim, who'd you bring with us today? We have an amazing woman. Olga Newman. She runs La Jolla Loves Pets Foundation. It's a rescue for uh, pets. Fascinating woman and um, I can't wait to have her on. I hope she brought some puppies with her. I hope she brought some puppies too. <laughs> Let's meet her. Let's go find out. Hello Olga, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So you run La Jolla Loves Pets Foundation. Yeah, that's okay. right. Can you tell us a little bit about it and what you guys do? Yes, we are a nonprofit foundation that create that organizes events and we raise the money from these events and we make donations to local rescues. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, we do three events per year. La Jolla Matstrat in the spring. It's oh, a community yeah. dog walk. La Jolla Doggo Ween, which is a Halloween costume contest celebration. And we also do La Jolla Santa Paws, which is usually tied to the parade and nice. we do a Christmas celebration. We are all nonprofit, volunteer okay. run. We don't mm -hmm. have any payroll we everybody who is committing their time is a volunteer so once we do the event we deduct what was spent on the event and whatever is left we give it all to the rescues and there are those local rescues here yep okay. you have to be a registered local rescue in san diego county you have to have a non-profit status for two years or more and you have to have a transparent paperwork posted mm. on the registry so that we know you are operating your you're legit and and as long as you're saving the animals we now have 13 rescues that we support um, sometimes all of them at once sometimes one or two at a time mm. we try different things and try to help in different ways so how long has that organization been around this is our second year second actually year. third third year and you started the organization yeah wow started last and so what inspired that um, I think uh, being around animals is kind of like part of who I am <laughs> now. I kind of like I've been surrounded by dogs. I've been in the pet sitting business for the last 25 years. I have a pet sitting business software that I develop hmm. and now adding philanthropy around pets mm -hmm. is kind of a natural thing. Um, but the um, catalyst was a fundraiser I helped with uh, for a local high school for La Jolla High and it was post COVID. We couldn't do anything inside. Well, we could, but we didn't want to take a chance. So we're like, well, let's do something outside. And we decided to do a dog walk. Mm -hmm. And when the next year roll along, they went back to Gala's because Gala's fundraise uh, a lot more uh, money. A lot more people are drinking, mm -hmm. people are yeah, betting. Money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Money. We were a daytime event. We didn't raise as much. But it was fine because like, it actually works out perfect because I took that momentum. What I've noticed people, uh, when they came to the very first Mastrat, they were so excited to finally have something for their dogs. 
that I just kind of took the momentum and I registered a foundation and I created a board. Good for you. And we just rolled with this. So how many people are involved in your organization? On the board, we have six board members. Okay. And uh, the rest is volunteers. We literally have like, it's going to be 20 volunteers involved oh, in the awesome. upcoming Mutstrat. And uh, we just, we usually end up pulling a lot more. So where does the Mutstrat start and what's involved and where does it end up? Yeah, I was interested yeah. in the Mutstrat. So the Mutstrat starts with a community dog walk that starts at the La Jolla Rec Center mm -hmm. and then it ends at La Jolla Rec Center. Uh, so it's a loop going down the scenic route and then when you come back you get um, the medal, you get, um, <laughs> you get to be, okay. uh, you get to take pictures with your pet and then we have contests from, so from 10 to 11 is the mustrat. You kind of like start, but then you kind of, as people come, they go, they do their mustrat, and then 11 o'clock is when the contests begin. We roll out the red carpet. We bring canopies out. We actually now have chairs along the red carpet. Wow, so like, real, we have a VIP. It's like a tent. dog Oscars. We have a VIP tent wow. with a butler, butler who will fetch you snacks and drinks and for you and your dog. Oh wow! Um, so we're trying. It's a little bit. We're doing something new this year. That's fun. With that, because before it used to be people are just standing around and it's hot. If the sun comes out, mm -hmm. the dogs are hot. So like, let's give people shade. So this year, everybody's gonna have shade. Everybody who buys the ticket and. Um, um, and then people watch the contest for two years. It's not a catwalk, it's a mutt strut. Right. Yeah. Mutt strut. But yeah. I picture just kind of like the fashion week of the dogs walking down the thing, down oh, the yeah. red carpet with people watching them. So when you, uh, are the dogs in like costumes? Well, they're one of the costumes, contests, it will it's be best dressed. Best dressed dog. But then we'll have the most talented dog where mm -hmm. you don't have to wear a contest, but you will show us a trick in front of all, all of us. Oh. And this is actually the funnest because people have, you're not going to believe the tricks weird that people, tricks that people some of them through. weird, some of them are just like, wow, that is amazing. Um, then it's going to be the cutest dog, which is probably the hardest contest to uh, judge. Callie didn't win that one yet? Well, I can't, I, I, <laughs> oh, I, I, am can't. A, <laughs> I yeah, can't yeah. have people vote for Callie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then there's gonna be um, the best jumper. We're gonna do like a limbo, mm -hmm. but this is gonna be reverse limbo. Instead oh. of going under, you're do gonna you go Do you play that limbo song? <laughs> jump well, over it to the limbo it, song. It's gonna be the first time, so. Yeah, try yeah. it. Yeah, I think that was a good one. That's well, a good one. What a great place to do this, La Jolla, where yeah. it's so beautiful, you can walk along the beach. Yeah. There's so many scenic spots. Yeah, the, the right dogs center. are happy, the people are happy. Do people yeah. come from all over, or is it just La Jolla residents? It's a majority is La Jolla residents mm -hmm. because it's a walking distance. It's okay. at the rec center. Mm -hmm. But because we do an online marketing, we do get people all over. How many over dogs do you think will be there this year? About 200. 200 dogs. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Really? What does it cost to enter the mutt strut? So the early bird tickets are $10 per human, $15 per dog, <laughs> and kids are free. Love that. Kids are free, good. And then at the day of the event, the tickets will go up by $5. So is the Mud Strut the next event that's coming up for you, or is there a different yeah. event that's coming up? Yeah, May 11th May is 11th. Mud Strut. What yes. time does that start it's, at the rec center? It starts at 10 o'clock. Um, ends at 1. So the, the dog walk will be from 10 to 11. The costume contests and other contests will be from 11 to 1. Or, you know, it's sometimes, it just depends how long it lasts. So where can our viewers go to find out more information and register for this? It mm -hmm. is lajuelavspets.org. Perfect. Mm. And you can buy tickets online. And you have other events too, right? Yep. We have La Jolla Dogoween, which is usually the Halloween weekend, mm -hmm. where it's a major costume contest. And we also have La Jolla Santa Paws, which is usually pictures of a Santa, and then we'll walk in the parade. What are some of the costumes that stood out to you last year's? Um, it's, it's unreal. Like, I've never seen anything like this. This lady, she came as, a, you know, Game of Thrones game. Well, yeah. she called her costume Game of Bones. She, cre <laughs> she took a dog stroller, she hot glued the milk bones around it, 
she spray painted it with a metal color. She, she created the oh, dragon wow. throne. Mm. The dog, the little dog, smaller than mine, was the dragon, and she was wearing mm. this long blonde hair, like the oh, blonde hair. Yeah. Uh, and she called herself the Game of Bones. It was amazing. Oh, we had fun. like last year, it went, we had like a Vegas casino where we had the lady create a real casino table, poker mm. table, and mm. the dog was sitting at the poker table playing poker cards. Mm. <laughs> it's it's unreal. We had a f like I even something even less elaborate, like a family dressed up as a shark attack you know mm -hmm. like two kids were sharks and there was a broken surfboard there were surfers mm -hmm. like so ever like there was a family of four or six mm -hmm. and they all had a little piece it was all self-made costume but the idea they were so into it and they mm -hmm. were so excited it's it's really those events are unreal even if you don't have a dog you should still go so and dogs look at seem events. to bring out the best creative of all of us, I right? Think Everybody so. loves I dogs. Everybody loves yeah. dogs. Yeah, and especially like we have like a like an uh, elderly community next to the rec center, and there's these three ladies. I don't even know their names, but they always ask me in advance what are the costume categories because they start preparing two months in advance. <laughs> wow. They each pick a category so they don't compete against each oh, other. Nice. But their goal is to win the first one in the category they pick. Mm -hmm. And this is their thing. This yeah. is what they do. It's it's amazing. So what's new this year? What are you what are you looking at that's gonna be new this year and different? The canopies and the shading and the VIP tents. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. So you're we're gonna provide doing it shade. Like, yeah. Oh good. Well, it's like we were the board and I were discussing this like, well, we've done this what can we do better? And then not having the shade came up because the dogs, it's a three hour event and for a dog, it's a long time. Right. For the dogs to be able to lay down in the shade and for the humans to sit in the shade, that will allow people to spend more time watching the costumes instead of sitting on the grass and right. like, especially if the sun is out. So this is new and we're so trying are you, it. So are you looking for more sponsors and volunteers for this upcoming event? We are looking for sponsors, we are looking for volunteers, and we are looking for vendors. Mm -hmm. we, are, we all understand San Diego is a last minute town. Everybody is on their own <laughs> San Diego time right. zone. So even if it's like a week before the event, we will get you in. We are laid back, we mm -hmm. are very efficient in what we do. This is our third time. We can enroll you and That's promote awesome. you, and we have local printers uh, like at hand. We have, uh, we we are. You we're, have the support of the community. We do, and we you're do. growing. So many people have like some of the local businesses are helping us with money by sponsorships, mm -hmm. but so many businesses donate the. Uh, to the silent auction, to the raffle. Mm -hmm. We'll have a raffle again. Um, so many businesses supported by, here, let me print this for you. Here, let me post this for you. Let me repost it. Let me put it on my door, you so know? So it, it reaffirms what a great community La Jolla really is and yeah. how we always join together mm -hmm. and help support each other in all the different causes, mm -hmm. projects, Absolutely. nonprofits. Absolutely. So many people just step up in La Jolla yeah. and fill that gap. I yep. love that about La Jolla. And they have the resources. Uh, yeah. It's a wonderful place Absolutely. to do it. I but had a quick question happy. for yeah. you. Um, if, a, if a rescue mission needs help with something, right? Let's say they need funding for food or mm -hmm. some sort of resource. How do they apply with you guys to get that help? It's on the website. They mm -hmm. can fill out an application. We vet their paperwork and then we just... Um, so in the past what we did, we would split all of the proceeds between all the rescues evenly. Then the second event rolls around, well, we have more rescues. So now the cut is a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So we would give more to the ones who came and less to the ones who couldn't mm -hmm. come. Now we are trying like one or two rescues at a time and mm -hmm. we just rotate them. Mm. We just want to make sure that everybody gets like something and right. we want to make sure it's impactful. And because we're only two years old, we don't have ability to make like, okay, here's a hundred thousand dollars impact. We can't, we can't mm -hmm. do that. Right. But a little bit at a time and I think every dollar helps like yeah. with rescues. Sometimes it's just a matter of paying hundred dollars for mm -hmm. surgery and sometimes mm -hmm. it's more and we really don't micromanage the rescues about where the money goes. As long as they're legitimate rescues, they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. and we trust that they will spend the money wisely on them. So, help me on this. What's the difference really between adoption and rescuing? Like, what is the difference? Is a rescue more of an abused pet that was mm -hmm. left behind and, and found versus 
Mm -hmm. So rescue usually is the ones that go to the shelters and pull the animals that have been there too long and they're now it's in the get out. list. Yeah, oh, if I you see. don't pull them, those animals will be so euthanized. So they're the elderly dogs. Sometimes it's elderly. We support frosted faces. They're only the only thing they do is elderly. You say frosted, frosted faces? faces. Well, frosted yeah. I've never heard that. I That's great. That. Both my dogs are getting frosted <laughs> yes, faces. Yes, and they pull. They they they're the people that res I that see. shelters would call. So and they're say, rescuing just, from from the shelters. So the people sometimes surrender the dogs to the shelters, and then the dog will sit at the shelter a certain amount of time. But because the shelters are so overcrowded today, I mean, it's a real crisis right now. Mm. So the dogs sit there and the new dogs come in. So they need to rotate them Got out. It. If you don't pull this dog by Friday, we have to euthanize it down. because we have too many dogs coming and in. And so yes. that's a big need then is creating new space and new shelters? Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is something I think which is the main, like kind of the big goal. So the small goal is to raise money and give it to the rescues. Right. But on the other hand, like why are the shelters overcrowded? How do we solve mm -hmm. this problem? And again, you know, the way we brought our community together to do the dog games and raise the money and give it to the rescues. My dream is to bring our community together and figure out not just a band-aid because giving money to rescues is a band-aid. Right. How do we empty the shelters? How do we what is the real problem? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like like I I would like to create, and I don't know if somebody will see me talking about this, but I would like to create a committee under my nonprofit that will actually brainstorm the solution, how to end the cause of uh, shelters being overcrowded. Is it animal surrender due to finances? Is it animal for surrender due to the health issues, overbreeding? Is it dogs being not neutered spayed? Is it dogs being neglected and abused? I'm sure there's a small percentage which where the real abuse happens, right? You have like really bad dog parents that abuse their animals, don't feed them and throw them out. But in reality, this is a very small percentage of all the dogs that are homeless. I mean, the surrenders of families or people who are moving and can't go, can't, can't take, take their the pet, pet. Yeah. or there's a, they need to move to a different apartment, there is no pets policy. I mean, there is just so many issues. How do we resolve those issues? So is overbreeding one of the main it's issues? Overbreeding is one of the issues. And neutering? Neutering and spaying. And, uh, I mean, is that the majority, do you think? I think a lot of it is animal surrender because of not being able to afford the animals. Mm -hmm. and this really? Is, and this is all like not to be able to pay the pet, pay the pet deposit or vet bills. Or it's getting I vet think, bills, it's getting I mean, too and much. I don't have the exact numbers, yeah. but from what I'm seeing is what's happening yeah. is, and again, how to approach it. What is cheaper for us as a society to give the food to somebody who can't afford to feed their dog or to let them bring the dog to shelter? We still have to feed the dog. Now right. the and dog is in the shelter. Day. Now we're paying for electricity, gas, staff, cleaning people, people mm. who walk. So we're spending now three times more than we could have just given food to that family right. and prevented that animal surrender in the first place. So like, just think about it. When we had... When, when back in the 60s, the safety on the road, because there were so many cars, was a problem. We invented like seat belts were mandatory. Then alcohol, mm -hmm. like, you know, like crashes and like alcohol, uh, for example, breathalyzers were like 0.8 or whatever that is. There were laws and procedures put in place to save those lives of mm -hmm. people who were dying on the roads. Same thing if has to happen. If we take this system of how that problem was solved, and if we veer it towards the animals and c figure out what are the risks that are outside of our control, what are the risks that are under our control, what can we do to prevent this. Risk mitigation is, it will work on any business model. So mm. if we t put it towards animal and shelters and mitigate those risks, how many lives can we save? And again, when I tell you 920 animals were euthanized last year, it's a number, right? Like 920,000, what does it even mean? I've never seen- 920,000? 920,000 animals, yeah. That is just the statistics which wow. they're saying is not, it could be higher. Right. But, but I've never personally seen a room full of 920,000 animals. It's hard what for that me to looks comprehend like. my hand. But if you start seeing the stories of those animals on social media, you kind of understand this more. So mm -hmm. by sharing the stories, not and just numbers, increasing awareness, the awareness, and then when the brightest minds get 
together in the room. You, all you need is like company of three, right? Mm -hmm. Like three smart people ha that somebody can have technology, public relations, operations, you know, like you get this all in and then like there will not be a lack of financing because right. everybody wants to help. It's just people don't know how they can help. People well, don't know. Who I have a feeling it. once this airs, yeah. that La Jolla residents are, are going to be reaching out. You're going to have more help you. than oh, you ever that's, needed. That's kind of like I think my hope to create the awareness you and will. to bring people Good. together because I alone cannot do it. And the events is a one big amazing thing that we're doing and we certainly will continue doing them, that. But if we figure out how to fix this in San Diego County and then we duplicate this model in Chicago, Other, in Dallas right. and everywhere else, we can actually Do make something. an impact yeah. and because we're spending so much money on shelters. Right. What, how can we like step back and figure out the root cause. I like know, it. Like. Well, that's an awesome mission, Olga. We're Thank happy you. for you. Yeah. I know you're going to get a lot of attention from you this. Will. Thank and you. Uh, good for you for helping. You. you know yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. And thank you for coming on the show. I you love your passion. You're an amazing guest. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, guys. Yeah, thank this, you for inviting me. Of course. The world needs anytime. more people like you, Olga and Callie. We'll bring right. you She's back asleep. and we'll see the progress that's happened. <laughs> and Callie, it was good to have you. We'll report back for yeah. sure. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Thank you, guys. Nice meeting you. Thank you all so much for watching Discover La Jolla, where we showcase this coastal community. We'll see you next time. See you next time.